What's up guys, Nolan here. As I mentioned in the last video, I would do a follow-up. That's more of an opinion piece after watching the full interview and even get some responses from Nikita on follow-ups. Luckily, I was able to get both in here for this video, along with some things that I missed in the first video for sure. A couple of clown guy appearances in that last video. In the near future, I will also go over each of these major topics from this interview so it's a bit easier for you guys to get the best information possible. We know that a lot of this stuff gets stale over the months. So for the bigger topics, I'm going to segment them up into their own videos so next time you can just look up you know tarkov unconscious state tarkov pmc karma tarkov new edition of the game stuff like that and then it's going to be potentially even a youtube short that just gets you exactly the answer that you're looking for going to do all that coming up so you'll see those pop up in the coming weeks now this video is to be watched along with the first video which i'll link because i'm going to skip things to save time on this one so if you have not seen the first video or if you haven't even seen pestily's interview with nikita those are both linked in the description what i'm doing here is i'm going over anything that was missed and adding extra details that I can glean from it along with some extra stuff from Nikita. The first thing that I missed was the intention to add in-game poll systems to both the in-game main menu and the launcher. It's a quicker transfer of information to the devs from the active community rather than something on Twitter, something on the website, something through email or even Reddit. We'll see if they end up doing that and we'll see what they, you know, if they actually make use of it. The team is putting in their best effort to make sure the full release has an exclamation point and is the best release that they have ever done done. It is everything. According to Nikita, quote, it is the most important release, end quote. As Nikita has been leading us to believe over the last year or so, there's going to be a lot of new things that are being saved for full release. Their main focus of this year is to be prepared for, for, for full release, which it seems like some people are a bit lost on that one. Just because they're saying that this year they're making it their focus to be prepared for full release doesn't mean that they are actually releasing next year. If they fail, then they're going to need to focus again next year. So until we actually hear exactly when they are going to to release the game it's safe to assume now it's going to be next year but there's no guarantee that the release is next year one of the major headaches when it comes to dealing with the community and just weird information and stuff like that for games like this so like i was saying there's gonna be a lot of new things that are being saved for full release some of which i already know about and i know you guys will like them unfortunately pestily did not ask about that stuff or maybe he did maybe it got edited out i'm assuming he didn't really cut anything out of this but when it comes to that stuff i'm also going to assume that nikita wasn't able to talk about it but like i said i know you guys will like them so just sit tight all of those things require development time and that's time that can't be spent on something that's currently in the game so tldr they're working on some cool stuff but we won't be able to see it until full release staying with that topic the main team effort right now is around release features with the storyline quests and their functionality as well as the prestige system we will see more in the next tarkov tv apparently but the next wipe won't have as much content because the current work in progress is again for full release so because the next wipe is not full release, it's not going to show up. However, we will be getting some new things and they will show us during the Tarkov TV and leave some surprises as usual. One of those things being apparently another belt fed machine gun. We'll see if it ends up being the saw or something. We're not sure. Did not get an answer on that one. To add to that, I wanted to be clear since there was some confusion on the first video, both the persistent and seasonal wipe accounts are still the plan. That's been talked about now for a couple of years. However, it was my impression before with the first video and the notes that I had from the first video video that the prestige system would be in the persistent version of the game and not the white version. That was the way that I have thought about things. But here, as explained by Nikita, he said that the prestige system would be with the seasonal wipe account. So that's my confusion from before, because up until this interview, it was the opposite. So again, to be clear, there will be an account that does not wipe. It is going to be persistent. Then there is going to be an account that does wipe. It will seasonally wipe. According to Nikita, the prestige system will be with the seasonal wipes. So for every time that you prestige, you will earn a prestige token that you can then spend on something. What that something is, we will still have to wait and see. But I imagine some sort of achievement will also come with that. Nikita also said that you can earn things that will carry through wipes with those prestige tokens. Nikita also mentioned later on that there is already several different ways to escape from Tarkov in the main story quests and doing any of them will get you a token. Maps will be connected. We didn't get any specific details on that. As I mentioned in the first video, the way it's been discussed in the past is that there would be potential to have all of the maps but streets as one location and then streets is its own location. If they fail to do that or get that to work, there could be chunks of maps that are their own location as opposed to what we have now where it's of course factory, customs, woods. I am speculating that they would be able to figure out a way that it's just one lo lo like central location now where you can go freely from customs to woods to factory, things like that. If the map 
maps are close together. Then what's also been discussed in the past is the transportation system, like we're already seeing on woods and streets with the BTR or with extracts that include the train. In the past, Nikita has explained how you can use those transportation systems to possibly go from map to map, and I'm assuming that is going to be the case. So when we move from map to map without going back to our hideout, we either take the train, we take the BTR or some kind of other form of taxi system, potentially the helicopter. We'll have to wait and see. Nikita talked about terminal as the final location as explained in the past they will make terminal a very different kind of thing than we are used to and potentially even single player still not guaranteed it's that's not the first time he's talked about it being single player. It seems like they're leaning towards being it or having it be single player. Something they've discussed in the past is making it so that you potentially lose all of your gear. Like you'll check in at the front gate. They'll take all your gear like you do in the raid series. And then you have to scavenge even as a PMC while there. It will for sure be included in a way to escape from Tarkov in terms of the location in general. So all things considered, even though it is the final location, because of its significance to the story, I could see us not getting it until full release, but it has been on the roadmap before as something that will show up before full release so maybe we get a taste of it or part of it or not the fully implemented version or maybe there won't even like really be quests there but it's just the setup of like you don't start with gear and then see how that progresses and stuff like that we'll have to wait and see there will likely be even more traders coming and there is even one guaranteed already it will be used for special things that you earn in arena to then be used in the base game if i had to guess it will include the loadouts at some capacity and those are the special use or the ones that you find in game or Maybe there's even gonna be a system where you can spend some currency on getting loadouts and then also some kind of currency transfer to items in the base game, potentially even quest items. I think this would be a great opportunity to boost base game players drive to play arena as it clearly needs right now. So I think they'll use it as such. The unconscious state sounds like it is actually an active development based off of Nikita's response about it, but they are worried about adding bugs and delays to full release. So it's possible that the unconscious state gets pushed past full release or just never shows up at all. If I had to guess, I'd say they will cut it based off of his facial expressions. It's, it sounds like they are really struggling with it and it's taking away devs from other things while the game does work fine without it as cool and as like, actually good I, I i do think it would be good for the game to have it in there but for sure it's one of those things that would be cut for time while i don't think it really makes sense to add it as a dlc and if bsg are thinking the same way then maybe it never shows up at all what do you guys think do you think adding something as significant as the unconscious state where you can go down due to blood loss or due to concussion or a lot of different things actually and one of your buddies can actually pick you up do you think that makes sense to add as a dlc let me know we missed this part in the video too there was a new boss with new booby traps in the in the works mines and minefields as well as deactivation of those mines and the diffusal of the mines and those booby traps it sounds like they're having problems with him or at least the functionality around the mines or the diffusal of the mines or something so we'll see if it ends up popping up my guess is at the the bare minimum we get that boss because somebody worked on that boss and it sounds again like they were having trouble with the mine side of it so maybe they just ditch the mine side of it or they make them static or they make them so that you can't defuse them or something but then the boss does actually still show up we'll see like i mentioned in the first video pmc karma is now set in stone it is coming to the game nikita said that you will not know exactly or necessarily how to min max pmc karma as they will try to keep it secret but he assumes people will data mine it anyway so we'll, we'll see we'll see but when it comes to what will make a major difference between good and bad karma which was pesley's initial comment on it or question on it there is the bounty hunter boss that is the major difference for now which in case you missed it which you really shouldn't have please go watch the first video because i'm literally leaving things out of the first video or leaving at things out of this video that i covered in the first video please go watch that link in the description as well as the full interview itself too. but i digress as i mentioned in the first video the bounty hunter will hunt people with low pmc karma how low not sure but that is something that is going to be a unique difference a very big miss here on my part pestily simply didn't understand development or doesn't understand development and was asking about the unity 23 update in particular where nikita answered that unity 23 is not a performance boost but the work around it using the tools that comes with it will be and that was a major miss on my part i assume he was tying that all together i was assuming he included it as a major patch Again, big screw up on my part there on that one because 
as much as Unity 23 is significant and required to get an FPS boost and to get better performance, it in and of itself is not an increased FPS and a performance boost. So that needed to be clear. Something that was clear and something that is coming and something that will be an FPS and, and a, a performance boost is the graphical overhaul and the netcode work that they're doing because of the tools that they're going to get from Unity 23. Nikita is still confident that they'll be able to get a good boost to FPS and overall performance from those new workings. We'll just have to see what that ends up looking like. The new addition of the game will be better than Edge of Darkness. I asked and confirmed with Nikita today that you will be able to upgrade from Edge of Darkness to the new addition. So there is that. It's not a standalone. You're going to be able to upgrade from Edge of Darkness. It's going to be better than Edge of Darkness. That's the information. Whether you agree with it or not, I am just presenting the information to you that BSG are looking to make more money. So they will be adding a new addition to the game that is better than Edge of Darkness, and you will be able to upgrade from Edge of Darkness to the new addition. And my opinion on it is that this is yet another lesser of many evils on this end of things, seeing as their goal is to, with this, make more money. As shitty as that is, because Edge of Darkness was supposed to be you know unique supposed to be special that was supposed to be a hey we're an og kind of a thing and if you guys don't have alpha armband i'm wondering if there's going to be something for the people that wanted to step up and do that i'm hoping there's going to be something that wanted to step up and be like fully supportive of the game when it was still in development when we didn't think there was going to be something better because that was supposed to be that thing trust me i'm i'm right there with you guys definitely weird but also lesser of many other evils that could have happened with that as we actually discussed a bit in the first video speaking of them <laughs> and going back to the first video again another miss from the first video was on the anti-cheat. The way Nikita explains their in-development anti-cheat systems makes me more confident than I was. He said, quote, eventually it will be too difficult for them, end quote, in reference to the cheat developers. I won't underestimate the drive of cheat developers myself and wait to see how it works myself, but Zeph and Nancy, who got the notes for me on the first video, did get that bit about the in invasive anti-cheat wrong, as well as he never said that they would never add it. But he did certainly do a good job explaining that they likely will never add it due to the hit to performance, literally saying that it would, quote, ruin performance. So to be clear, Nikita never said that they will never add it, but it seems really clear that they won't. It seems like they just really, really won't. But he also added a bit here saying that they might, quote, force players, end quote, to make some changes to their PCs in the effort to play in a cheater-free environment, including changing things in your BIOS, which sounds pretty big. Overall, after hearing this for myself, and reminder, I was pretty down about the subject in the first video, but I'm now back to cautiously optimistic until we at least see this plan set up for anti-cheat, I assume, around release. It's the one that they're going to test in Arena first, and I'm sure there's going to be iterations on that and stuff like that. And also, I don't think that they will give us a heads up up when it's going to actually happen because they do want to also catch the cheaters as at least as many of them as possible so we'll see what ends up going on with that end of things i'm still in the same mindset that i was uh, approximately as the first video i really don't think that there's ever going to be a fix especially in a game like escape from tarkov for cheaters i think the cheat developers are are just they're, they're got money on the mind they're always going to find a way they're always going to work towards trying to figure out ways around it and until i see or hear otherwise i think it's i think it's just it's just other stuff we're gonna have to deal with there it's it's just stuff we're gonna have to deal with while we play the game as with really any other game out there it's just that it's a pandemic right now or epidemic whatever the word is a piece of that conversation to me at least is the response to the after raid replay and i am covered this a little bit in the comments later a bunch of you guys commented on it it's got a bunch of people with some very unique opinions on twitter again about this after raid replay and its effect with cheaters if you need to understand how important something like that would be from a from a, a anter cheat or, or catching cheater perspective check out komomo on youtube he is a server admin for rust that goes around following and messing with cheaters something that you will understand very quickly is these are horrible players and obvious even when they know there's admins on these servers that go and hunt them they are still obvious this is very clear who's cheating and who's not the vast majority of time so even if we can't trust the exact preciseness of the raid replay of where that person's aiming when they shot exactly where they're aiming which truly is a problem with the re the, the the kill cam and the replay that we get for arena i'm not saying it's perfect it's far from it you don't even need that 
that part. Hell, we don't even need to necessarily see pinpoint accuracy of the kill itself because it will still show these guys looking directly at you through entire maps, like snapping from player to player, snapping through landscape, walking directly to high tier loot like nothing else exists, acting differently when somebody gets close, just, just literally looking at you through the map, no matter how far away you are. When they think nobody is looking, snapping to AI, clearly skipping obvious things that they should be looting to go to ones that clearly, obviously have high tier loot in them. I guarantee it will lead to a significant drop because the people who don't do a good job hiding that they're cheating will be found while that person that they just killed goes and watches and reports them. Obviously, hopefully the report actually works. That's a whole other subject, but still that's a solid report. That's a solid proof. And every single time that I personally send something like that to BSG, that person's gone by the end of the game. It's just unfortunate that we can only do that in arena. Alternatively though, on the other hand too, making other cheaters, even if they aren't that obvious, be significantly more cautious or even play without. It would be a significant deterrent compared to not having it. Maximum, we will see flying or moving faster than you should or worse. Cause they fuck it, they do it in arena. And that's just from the cheater perspective or the anti-cheat perspective. The game knowledge perspective is endless due to the ability to understand where or how you died. For real though, if you haven't seen cheater POVs or people messing with them before, go check it out. It is ridiculous. I'll link Komomo's channel below. I guarantee it's the same level of shitters that we're dealing with over here in Escape from Tarkov as he's dealing with there in Rust. Probably worse because they know nobody's watching. Moving on though, significant, <laughs> another miss on my part here. I straight up forgot that they changed those crafts so that you need Lightkeeper for the Lettuce crafts. That's just complete dumbass right there on my part. I have a lot of things to track on this stuff now that I'm tracking four big games between Star Citizen, Broken Arrow, Ashes of Creation, and Escape from Tarkov. For those that don't know, I now have several channels and I try to stream as much as possible just so I can get away from Escape from Tarkov because the, the mental strain of dealing with the community on this game has completely drained me of everything in my life. So big mess up on that part there. Completely forgot they changed that two wipes ago. Or was it last wipe something like that so clown guy moment on that one yeah those crafts are dumb now no response from nikita on that one and actually while on that subject a significant portion of the end of the video was just pestily suggesting things with no response from nikita so nothing good or bad to take away there but nikita was typing a lot so maybe he took them down i'm assuming he did and maybe he'll take it seriously we'll see all of it was uh, almost all of it was like quality of life stuff and generally nothing serious to take away from it in terms of this interview all the same though, if you have not seen the full interview for yourself, check it out. I'll link it below. Something I'm going to start doing at the end of each video is pick a few comments from the last one to talk about, which is, I understand, very dangerous for my and all of our mental health, but fuck it, we ball. The truly outstanding above all else comment was about how I repeated myself so many times last video. I thought it would add good emphasis on stuff, especially where I use just B-roll instead of gameplay. So I figured on the chance that because there's so many topics, maybe Maybe you get distracted while essentially just listening to me talk on the important stuff. You get to hear what I say once, then actually really pay attention. Like, oh, what did he say? And then make sure that you get the information without having to, you know, rewind or anything. I also read that in real time and the stuff I thought was important. I, it kind of just felt right to say twice. Like I just kind of did it without really thinking about it too much, but message understood. Not going to be doing that again. A lot of people talked about the crafts and the wipe accounts because I literally, I asked you to, and uh, we just covered that clown guy moment on that one. Forgot about that part. I'll good there. There's also a big discussion about the new edition of the game. We covered it here already as well, but I'll add to it again. You're not wrong really to dislike that. I dislike it as well, but in my opinion, it is a lesser of multiple evils now as BSG are looking to make more money. If you don't think BSG need more money, then I assume you won't be convinced otherwise. Well, if you understand that they will need more money in the future at some point for what they have planned, then you'll understand it. There's nothing that I can do to change that. You guys are welcome for your own opinions or to your own opinions. That's the end of that. I am done trying to defend BSG on a daily basis just because I understand the direction that they're coming from or my opinion, my honest, <laughs> complete honest. Like people just like the whole point of this is so I can share my opinion on stuff. Uh, opinion is just positive. Like I get, I worked in game development. I can see where they're coming from on a lot of this stuff. When I don't understand it, I make that clear. But if I understand where they're coming from, even if a ton of the people on the internet, like with the arena thing, for example, a perfect example is that where like, why are they putting it out in steps and stuff like that? 
I got so much hate for that stuff, but I knew that that was the right way to do it. It's like that. Like I, it's it's just it's I don't understand it. It's like a wall. You're allowed to disagree, but I do not have the mental strength to care anymore because I don't know which of you are people with level-headed thinking abilities actually giving feedback or trolls, liars, haters, bots are all put together. I will be presenting information along with my opinion. If you hate me for that, suck my dick fuck off somewhere else. I'm done. But that's all for today, guys. For the minute by minute stuff, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, both linked below. The games I actually enjoy still covering, like Star Citizen, Broken Arrow, or Asher Creation can be found on my other channels here. Thanks for the support on those guys. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.